In this week's Pearson Workholding Q&A, I'm answering the highly debated question of do grooves in a vacuum chuck actually add holding power? So a customer of ours emailed me asking if adding grooves to a fixture helps add holding power. So listen to this email. I recently got into an argument with my boss where he was saying that there isn't vacuum acting on the area of the part where the fixture is contacting it. So grooves make more vacuum area, which creates more force. So I was telling him all that matters is that the air is removed from under the part and there shouldn't be any air between the part and the fixture. So full vacuum is achieved whether there's a channel or not. Plus the more surface touching the part, the more friction there is to prevent the part from moving. A couple weeks ago, I made a vacuum fixture with one of your top plates without the grid pattern and it didn't work quite as well as usual. So I added the grid inside the vacuum area and it worked better. I'm still trying to figure out why this is. Is my boss right or am I right? So that's a great question. So adding grooves to the surface of a DIY chuck or in the case of one of our top plates is a classic case of monkey see, monkey do. Now by this, I mean that at some point a machinist saw a chuck with a grid pattern copied the design and assumed that the grooves were there to add holding power. But in reality, the only purpose of grooves is to give a place for the gasket to be placed into. Now it has almost absolutely no effect on performance and I'll explain almost in a minute. But first, let me cover the science. The downward holding force of a vacuum chuck is created by a combination of multiple factors. The minor factors are elevation above sea level, ambient temperature, and atmospheric pressure or your barometric level. But the two biggest factors are number one, the surface area exposed to the vacuum on the plane of the gasket. And number two, the maximum vacuum level of the pump, which is usually stated in inches of mercury. So let's talk about the first one, the surface area exposed to the vacuum on the plane of the gasket. Now to really understand it, you have to get to the molecular level. When you look at our chuck, you'll notice that it has a blanchard ground texture. Now to an air molecule, this texture is like the Grand Canyon. There's plenty of surface area exposed for the vacuum chuck to act on. Now, when two smooth surfaces come into contact, you have to add time as a factor. So let's say you put a smooth piece of plastic on one of our smooth top plates. When you turn on our vacuum power unit, the air pressure between the two starts to drop and the part is drawn flat to the top plate. As the part and the top plate surface make contact, there is still space between the two surfaces for air to flow on the molecular level, but more like a shallow ditch on the side of a road and not the Grand Canyon. Now the flow is slower over time, but this won't be a problem because if the part starts to lift, immediately a huge gap opens up on the molecular level and the vacuum sees a lot of surface area and it pulls the part down again. This happens too fast to measure or even to notice. Now, let me explain why it worked better when our customer added a grid pattern. The formula to calculate downward holding force is to multiply the surface area exposed to the vacuum by 14. For example, a 10 inch by 10 inch gasket pattern will provide 1400 pounds of holding force. So let's say we take this 10 inch square part and set it on a chuck with no grooves, only the perimeter gasket. 
the atmosphere is pushing down on the part with 1400 pounds and the entire smooth face of the chuck experiences a force of 14 pounds per square inch. Now let's add some grooves that give us some square islands. Now let's say these islands take away half of the surface area contact with the part. And we still have the same downward holding force, but the part is now pressing down on 50 square inches, not 100. This means each one of those squares is bearing 28 pounds of part pressure. It's the same vacuum force, but the gripping force is now doubled because the part has half of the surface area to rest on. It's the same reason our tires have treads. Now, racing slicks have great traction on a clean, dry track, but are absolutely horrible in wet or sandy conditions. Now, all this being said, if you're struggling with low surface area parts moving on you, the best hack to achieve maximum part traction is to use our sandpaper technique, and I mentioned that in this video right here. Now, I'll assume you're already subscribed to our channel, but if you've stuck around past this math, you're probably getting value from any of our content, so please give us a thumbs up, which would be greatly appreciated. So until the next Pearson Workholding Q&A, go innovate your production.